So we're all in agreement that Kaya is the Manic Pixie Marsh girl. Hi guys, it's Ashley. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in today. We are talking about Reese Witherspoon today, the queen of contemporary literature. Like if your book isn't picked by Reese Witherspoon, Good luck. Good luck selling that thing. And if it is, good job. You've got a bestseller. So I've read a few Reese Witherspoon picks in my short little life. And I go back and forth between like how much I like them. Typically, I'm a lit fic gal. Not quite the contemporary reads for me. But I do like them. Especially when I'm in a reading slump, which I am in today. If you watched one of my latest vids about me being depressed and what I read then, I talked about being in a reading slump and some of those books only made it worse. So I'm hoping that Reese can save the day. The books that I've previously read were Outlawed by Anna North, Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed, and The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Now, all of those super engaging reads didn't love all of them. Outlawed, so fun. I read it really fast, but the ending, it left me wanting, is what I would say. It's about a group of outlaws, mostly women and non-binary people who did not fit into their communities and were then exiled. And it's about their little band and what they do. Super fun, loved the world. Ending, could have been better. Solid three stars, maybe a seven out of 10. Such a fun age, on the other hand, so engaging from start to finish, excellent ending, read it all on, an, on a road trip to California, started, finished it in one single day. And that is about a black American female babysitter who is babysitting a white kid from a wealthy family. They go to the grocery store to pick up groceries as everyone does and then someone calls the cops on her because they think she's kidnapped the child and it's about the fallout of that and how their lives intertwine it's a great exploration of white privilege and I do recommend a lot of people read that one because I really enjoyed it now the guest list by Lucy Foley a lot of people really love this book including Reese Witherspoon and some of my friends but I didn't feel it I I think it's possible I just don't like mysteries. When I read the back of the cover for the book, I don't know why I picked it up after doing that, but I was like, oh, obviously this person is the murderer. Turns out I was correct. I don't think I like whodunits. I'm just like never surprised. I don't find it suspenseful. And I think mysteries are all about the surprise, the twist, the suspense. And I just like could not be more interested or could not be less interested. Either it's obvious and you're like, oh, guess I was right. Like, is that fun for anyone? Or it's that every character could be the murderer. And then once again, I'm not surprised because they all could do it and I don't care. I liked the atmosphere, but you know, six out of 10. I still read it really fast. So I guess it was engaging. Good for Lucy there. So those are the ones I've read that I know of off the top of my head. And they were all, they were all near a solid three stars. Such a fun age. Higher than that, four stars. So I know Reese can give me some engaging reads. I might not love all of them, but I'm gonna read her most popular, most read books from her book club because I'm hoping they will be engaging and I will like them since everybody in the world likes them, including Reese herself. All these books I'm talking about, Reese loves. So first book I'm gonna read, Where the Crowd Daddies Sing. Before I saw the trailer for this, I... <laughs> I thought this was about a black woman in the South. Tell me why I think all historical fiction taking place in the South during the civil rights movement. Why do I always think it's about race? This is literally not about race. But this is actually about a girl who grows up in the wild, or should I say the marsh where the crawdads sing with like no family, no friends. She's basically like a 1960s wolf girl. And she is white, apparently so white that she might be Irish. Hello, Daisy Edgar Jones. Just kidding, she is Southern, but super white and she's accused of murder. So I know how that's gonna go. She will get away with it. So it's a mystery. Let's see if I'm right in the end because I usually am because I have little brains. Next one, another mystery. The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura. I was gonna say Laura Dern, Laura Day, which is also being turned into a movie. This is about a woman who wakes up one day finding her husband missing and he leaves her a note saying, protect her. 
referring to her stepdaughter. And uh, I guess the rest of the book is like figuring out what happened. Not setting myself up so great so far, but they're popular. People love them. Uh, and you know what else they love? The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett. Hi, Ashley from the past. Guess what? You're an idiot and did not do your research. Turns out Vanishing Half was never a pick from Reese Witherspoon, but unfortunately it's too late now. I'm keeping it in the video, but just uh, know that anything I say about this book has nothing to do with Reese Witherspoon's taste. Has anyone not heard of this book? Do I have to say what it's about? Two light-skinned black women and one passes as white and one kind of lives out as black. I don't know, they're twins. They look the same, but one passes as white and one doesn't. I also got the audiobook so I can do both. And speaking of audiobooks, I got this book, which people say has a really good audiobook, so I also got both. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I don't know if I'm a Taylor Jenkins Reid fan. I read Malibu Rising. Didn't love it. Didn't really have strong thoughts other than the ending upset me. Upset me. The ending upset me. Should never be a writer, oh my god. But this is a fictional account of the breakup of Fleetwood Mac who I love. Just kidding. It is about a fictional band called Daisy Jones and the Six. But it was inspired by Fleetwood Mac and I love rumors and I love the drama behind it. Since I'm interested in the subject matter, I might like this more than I liked Malibu Rising. Oh, and the last book is actually her newest book recommendation, which is True Biz by Sarah Novick. I hope that's how you say her name. So I'm gonna read it, see how her most popular ones compare to one that nobody has opinions on yet. And this is about some deaf kids at a school, a high school, an academy for deaf kids, children, teens. And one thing I've already noticed just by picking it up is they have little pictures of signage, signage. So I'm really excited to read this. So let's get reading, bye. By far my favorite facts that I've learned by reading True Biz is that Martha's Vineyard used to have its own sign language. Amazing. <laughs> And then I read some books. Let's talk about them, baby. Cool girl mode achieved. Let's talk about the books. Some I loved, some I liked, and some were like, ooh, as I expected. But which ones were ooh? I'm gonna tell you. First of all, minor complaints before I start complaining about the books. Um, it's snowing outside, and it's the end of May, and I need to stop singing. First off, True Biz. Let's talk about that new recent book that people don't have opinions on yet, except for me, because I read it. Alexander Graham Bell being a eugenicist and me not knowing about it until reading this book it feels right. But I really liked this book. It really helped me like question and interrogate how we can make our communities more accessible. We should probably all learn sign language, probably. And it, it made me appreciate everything I take for granted for being a hearing person. Like, I'm a sound designer and I edit these videos. Like, that would be practically impossible if I were not hearing. And just other things like being able to hear a fire alarm or someone breaking into your house or hearing the police yell like, put your hands up, things like that, would be very dangerous if you could not hear them. Let's get into the story. This is a coming of age story about a girl named Charlie who is deaf but has implants and they're not really working very well, so she goes to the school. And the point of views did kind of irk me. Loved Charlie's, as I said, but 
I did not care about the headmistress and her struggles. Didn't really care about Austin that much. But it felt unnecessary for the story. So criticism number one, I wish it was all in Charlie's perspective. Criticism number two, and this is important, um, the format of the book, why did she do that? And I don't mean adding in those little pictures. The pictures, the worksheets were cool. What I'm talking about is like the dialogue was weird. Like if you're one of those people who doesn't like that Sally Rooney doesn't use quotation marks, like do not read this book. Like she does not use quotation marks and she makes it like way more complicated than it needed to be. Like there was no reason for her to do that. But like who cares about quotation marks? Like people have been talking without quotation marks for centuries. I don't care about that. Sarah she created these rules about like dialogue would just be like one little indent and that meant that the paragraph was starting with dialogue and then later she would completely break that rule and then it would just be like paragraphs were sometimes indented and sometimes not for no reason at all and then when characters were like talking back and forth from each other she kind of started this rule where like italicized words were signed and regular words were spoken and completely broke that rule later on it just felt like unnecessary like there was no reason for her to do that and then like if you were going to do that fine cool but like don't break your own rules third criticism whoa uh third criticism and most importantly was the ending it once again felt flat kind of like outlaw did for me i don't know the ending just happened so fast and it like came out of nowhere like the writer was like oh my god i need to finish this book what's a good idea oh i know let's throw some anarchy in there at the last 50 pages like if there was going to be like anarchy and exploring how violence is necessary to end depression. I wish that had been layered in throughout the book instead of the writer just being like, Oh, I know how we're going to end this. Look at me. I thought of an idea. Love a teen romance story, but I wanted the romantic tension to be a little stronger. And the personal conflicts like weren't really resolved, which doesn't always have to happen for it to be a good book. But in this case, like I wanted it. And I just didn't get the things that I wanted out of the end. I didn't get them. Overall, I think it needed like another draft and it needed to lose 100 pages. And uh, I don't know, I had, I had fun actually. So yay. And I learned some stuff. Double yay. Other than that, I don't know. It's like a solid three stars for me. Six out of ten. Next book, let's go to one I loved. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Very good. Yeah, that was very good. That's what people are telling me. It's really good. And I agree. I agree with you. I mean, what can I say that hasn't been said? <laughs> one thing I wrote down as like a note was that I felt like the writing was kind of similar to Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, which is one of my top 10 books, like one of my favorites. So that's a great comparison because I love her. It just feels like the prose is like tight, constricted and like meaningful. This will 100% be a classic in a few years. I would not be surprised if people started reading this in school. Criticisms, Um, I don't have like a lot. There's just like so much tension and fun things to explore just in general about somebody pretending to be someone they're not for their entire lives. I and mean, I wanted just like a little bit more of that because that's kind of fun. Honestly, I could have had a hundred more pages. Like that could have been longer. I wanted to sink into those characters like a little bit more. Story, great. I loved following it. But you know what? I want more. Opposite of true biz. More, more, more. But honestly, at least a 9 out of 10. Over time, it could be an 8 out of 10. It could be a 10 out of 10. But for now, let's put it at 4.5. Okay, let's talk about The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura. I always want to say Laura Durr, and it's Laura Dave. Laura Dave. Laura Dave. I don't need to remember that. I'm not going to read another one of her books because it was just okay. I like I always read mysteries fast, but at the end I'm like, ugh. Okay, did I care about that? I don't know. What am I even supposed to say about this book? I literally took no notes on this. And that is because I read it and then completely forgot that I read it. What I will say about this book is that the last page did make me cry a little bit. I shed a little single tear. Although it could be because I was menstruating. It's probably that. The writing wasn't necessarily bad. I don't think this book is going to be boring for everybody. It's just me. I think... 
I don't like mysteries. Couldn't care less about the husband that was missing. Couldn't care less about the stepdaughter who's kind of bratty. Couldn't care less about the, the main character. Couldn't care less. She was just kind of like blah boring. Speaking of mysteries, let's go to Where the Crawdads Sing. It's technically a mystery, but I'd say like 75% of this book is like a kind of character study about this girl who grows up in the wild. I enjoyed the writing here and I enjoyed the manic pixie marsh girl. We love an outsider not fitting in. Here's what I think about Where the Crawdads Sing. It was good. It wasn't my favorite thing of all time. It wasn't quite as good as The Vanishing Half. I enjoyed myself. I read it quickly. I was finding all these different ways that I was interacting with nature while she was talking about nature. All the nature writing was very lovely. And will I go see the movie? Probably. I love Daisy Edgar Jones. She's hot. And I am worried that her accent is gonna be super weird. But overall, did it impact me? Sure. Will I forget about it in two years? Yes. But you know, it did its job. I was entertained. Next book. Daisy Jones and the Six. As I said, not really a TJR bestie, TJR stan, but I loved this book. Oh my god, I read it in less than two days. I had the audiobook helping me along as well, which was great. One of the characters was played by Judy Greer. It's told in completely dialogue, which I read some reviews and people hated that, and I loved it. A lot of people didn't like that there was nothing to like visualize, but like I don't give a crap about world building in most of these books. I was invested in the story. It helps that I love Fleetwood Mac. Sometimes I love reading plays more than actually seeing them. So that's a kind of similar experience where you are left to completely imagine the characters yourself, completely imagine the world, but I'll tell you, I still had images in here. My creativity was working without any help from the author. And like, cool. I love when an author makes me do work. You don't? You don't love that? I love it. I feel like a rock star if I do this. I just thought this book was so fun. Daisy Jones had this like, what do you call them? Like alter ego, little name famous people give their hotels so that people don't come and stalk them. I and mean, it was like Lola Lafloggle, Lola Lafine, something like that, which is very similar to the alias by this character, which also became something of like a Lola Lafong. La, 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 something. I don't know if this is a particularly sad book, but it made me cry kind of like a lot. Love between the women in this book was absolutely incredible and I loved that. There were a lot of fun like feminist one-liners, loved those. I want to say I understand why people say that her books are laced with crack because it was addictive. It was like eating a cheesecake and you can't fucking stop. Before I go, I'm gonna throw a little idea out there, a little pitch for all the writers. Daisy Jones in the Six, but with Nickelback instead of Fleetwood Mac. Think about it, mull it over, it's a great idea. I am a genius. Cause we all just don't wanna be big rock stars living hilltop mansions driving 15 cars. Hey, I wanna be a rock star. Hey, I wanna be a rock star. That'd be good. And that's all for today. So thank you guys for watching, for tuning in. I will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. <laughs>